So this one says, <clears throat> as a system increases in volume, it absorbs 52.5 joules of energy in the form of heat from the surroundings. Uh, the piston it's working against is at a pressure of 5.5 atm. The final volume of the system is 58.0 liters. What was the initial volume of the system if the internal energy of the system decreased by 103.4 joules? So this is one like ones that we had done at the beginning of the chapter. Um, and uh, it's incorporating both heat and internal energy. Okay, so you got to remember the equation for internal energy. Delta E equals Q plus W. And in the case of uh, these chemical equations, it's going to be WPV. And if you want to recall, WPV equals the negative P of the atmosphere, atmospheric pressure, times delta V. So uh, let's go ahead and write down the things that it gives us here. So the reason I wanted to do this is because we want to think about what it's saying and what sign our energies are going in. Okay? So when it says it absorbs 52.5 joules of energy in the form of heat, it means it's gaining it, right? So that means plus 52.5 joules. Okay, so remember, heat is Q, right? So in this case, Q is going to be, what did I say, 52.5 joules, or if you want to, plus 52.5 joules. Um, it says the piston is working against an external pressure of 0 0.550 atm. Okay, so that one's pretty straightforward. It gives us the final volume of the system. So Vf is 58.0 liters. Um, it says that we're looking for VI. So we're going to have to find delta V first, right? And it also says the system increases in volume, so we should expect VI to be smaller than VF. Uh, and then it also says, what's the initial volume of the system, right, what we're looking for, if the internal energy of the system decreased by 103.4 joules? So that means delta E so it decreased, right? So it's negative 103.4 joules. Is everybody okay with those directions of those signs? So that's the thing you want to remember. The, probably the hardest thing about these types of problems. Okay, so let's just go ahead and I guess the first thing we probably want to do is solve for work. Right? So work is going to equal delta E. And then we're going to take this over to the other side. So minus Q. So we could just go ahead and solve for it now. So negative 103.4 joules minus
TATM. So when we do that, So joules per ATM, that's a weird volume unit, right? I guess think that's a weird volume. Okay, so, so we're gonna have to multiply that by So divided by 0.55. So in this case we get 283.45, and we'll just keep it all the way out for right now joules per one ATM. Okay, so hopefully that hopefully you guys can see that there's going to be a conversion involved here, right? So, because joules ATM, this is actually a volume unit, it's liters. But to make it look like liters, we've got to convert it. 101.3 joules is one liter ATM. You guys remember that. So this will be given to you, this conversion factor, but you got to know when to use it. So we're going to cancel there, cancel there, cancel there, cancel there, and then we get units that make sense to um, have for a change of volume. So divided by 101.3, 2.5. Eight oh, we'll just do to three six six now. Two point eight oh liters is the change in volume, right? So the initial volume is going to be VF. Sorry, yeah, VF minus delta V. Right, because of course delta V equals. VF minus VF. Okay, so VF they give to us, hopefully, if I remember, 58.0, the long problem, minus 28, 2.80 liters. So, 58. one decimal place after. Is everybody okay with that being the initial volume? Did you guys get that on your own? How about, are there any questions on this one? There's a lot of uh, steps. You know all the steps. So remember, just plug in equations here and there. Okay. No questions? Okay, good job.